This is a podcast from the Queen City Podcast Network. Welcome to Nerd School. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Yeah. Suck it, nerd. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Uh. Live with me, daddy ass. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Welcome to Nerd School. My name is Low Key. Welcome to the Nerd School podcast. You jerk. All right. This is the next <laughs> you Black de- Panther. You, you probably didn't know this, but you demanded it. You demanded it. <laughs> And you demanded the this listeners episode. demanded this. The listeners yeah. demanded this. You spoke and we listened, listeners. You've wanted this. You've wanted this for a long time. <laughs> you brought it back. That's you brought right. it back. That's right. That's the right. Rock and Roll Express and the Nerd School <laughs> are yeah. off the chains. That's right. You asked chains for it, folks. Cut loose. You chose your two favorite people on this podcast by far. Uh, and you you wouldn't shut up. And you said, we want the Rock and Roll Express of this po- Nerd School podcast to do an episode. Guess what, baby? You got it. You got it. It's just Art and Joe talking about Black Panther, everybody. Or whatever else. Andy is busy exploring uh, parts of his body he's <laughs> not really familiar with. He, uh, using his toes at that. <laughs> he's using his toes to search his, search his orify. Uh, and TBJ again, she's being, being a secret. superstar. She's being like a secret, a Sith Super secret because she's like, I will be off the grid for a week and I'm not telling anybody what where I'm going. So she's a spy. And maybe she told you. Who, me? But, yeah, where she is. Nah, she didn't tell me. She probably she said, told the world. She said she's off the grid. Uh, she said, I'm off the grid for a week. So you're on your own, idiots. Uh, no standing and practices. So yeah, yes, they no stand, no HR department in nerd school this week. So we're gonna just screw around. We're gonna just right. randomly talk about Black Panther. We're not gonna go through the movie like we will with with everybody. When everybody's back, we'll do that. But I am gonna just bring up some random things. I do have one question, and I don't know if you know the answer to this, Art Star. I'm assuming maybe you will. I do, maybe I don't. My big question at the beginning, it's something I kind of stumbled upon, is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I understand that, uh, Nakia, who is, uh, Black Panther's love interest, we'll get into that in a little bit, you know, when the next episode we'll get into their love interest and everything, but she's on a mission, uh, and he's got to get extract her kind of on a mission and messes up the mission sort of that she's on. So really, this was a la, I felt like this was a very close parallel to when they bring out bring Scarlett Johansson when they have to go get her and she's in the middle of a mission, like, you know, interrogating guys and she's tied up. Right. Right. A similar thing. Like, she's like, you screwed it up. I was about to kill all these guys. Like, you were like, you were tied up in a van. And she was like, no, I had this. Uh, but anyway, she is part of, I saw something online where she was part of, at least in the comics, a group called the war dogs. Yeah. The war dogs. And and there's several different people that are part of that. Well, you know, also in this movie, they do mention the war dogs. I feel like they, yeah, they mention the war dogs at some point, mm-hmm. right? So right. T- can you, what can you tell me about the war dogs in comics? I don't know a lot who... about the war dogs. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know a lot about the war dogs. I can tell you that the uh, Midnight Angels are different. Well, and well, no, I'm just see, now I'm mixing movies. Oh no, I'm mixing movies without Andy I'm, here. To, I'm to Wakanda correct you. forever <laughs> in this movie, and it's not Wakanda forever. And Andy's but, not. Oh, see, but, you're gonna get mixed up because you've seen that, and I haven't. Right, but it's but but it's 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 pretty much kind of sort of the same premise where you have like, you know, they're they they they're giving shout out to stuff that happened in the comics, and they and I mean Marvel does this with all of that shit, right? Like, you have, like, different versions. Like, you know, Andy last episode talked about how Everett Ross is different than the Everett Ross that we see in Black Panther comics. Yeah. So it's like you have the War Dogs being a different variation than they are 
So yeah, according to movie. according to the internet, the War Dogs and Marvel are the central intelligence service of Wakanda. Right. Um. So yeah, I, I guess I thought it was a, a whole different thing in Marvel, but and there's a war that War Dogs tattoo, that blue tattoo they have on their inner lip, is a is a the War Dogs tattoo. Mm-hmm. So let me see what it says in the. So there's the Marvel Cinematic Universe wiki, which I guess is different than a comics wiki, but it says the War Dogs are. Yeah, that's central. Oh, shit, you know, this website just pops up ads left and right. <laughs> uh, I fucking hate ads. It's awful. Um, but I guess that's who, in Jobu and those guys, like they're they're the ones who are stationed in in outside. Like they're they're not in they're, LA they're in doing, Oakland. Not yeah, in but LA, they're, yeah, they're doing things for Wakanda outside of Wakanda. Basically, the CIA. Right? They're like undercover. Like, you know, Checking right. out what's out in the world, right? So you know they have war dogs, and like in the movie they mentioned like, they're war dogs all over the world. Yeah, so they are. So they are. So Wakanda, even though, so that's why I was confused about this because they say uh-huh. Wakanda is, uh, like, not interacting with the outside world. They're hidden. They're just kind of staying alone. You know, not letting anybody know what they have. But they have these war dogs out checking out stuff. Right. Uh, well, so, so they are all yeah, over the world. So yeah, they're, they're they're not letting people know what's going on in Wakanda, but that means they still need to be kept abreast of what's going on outside of the world, encompassing Wakanda. Because you know, you, you want to be on the know when shit happens right outside your front door, even though people don't know that they're right outside your front door. You still want to know what's happening right outside your front door, right? You got to know, I guess. Yeah. So as far as I can tell from what I'm googling. Mm-hmm. War dogs, I guess, aren't in comics. I guess it's just the cinematic universe. So this might have been something that's just, I, I don't, know, Marvel War Dogs in comics. Like, how do you? Or maybe it was in the. Okay, War Dogs, aka Hatut Zarazi, aka the Dogs of War, secret police were created by writer Christopher Priest in Black Panther, Volume Three, Number Three, dating back to nineteen ninety nine. Okay, so this from the comic. Uh so I guess maybe that was something I was a little confused about the war dogs mm-hmm. at the at the beginning. I thought it was more a different group, but but I think I think Nakia. I keep on saying Nakia because that's how uh, Brent P, P says it on. on yeah. He's got me messed up on that. But uh, so I think that was one thing. I was like, uh, who are they? So the young Sterling K. Brown is is one of the war dogs. Like he's stationed in Oakland. And then one thing is I was watching with Oakland, the whole thing in Oakland happening uh-huh. in my brain. I'm not, I'm terrible at geography. I've always thought <laughs> Oakland and LA were like this synonymous, like Oakland's part of LA, LA, o- Oakland's in LA, you know, Oak town is just like outside of LA or near there in my brain. All of that's all in one mm-hmm. And San Francisco is like farther up the coast, but Oakland's way up, way up by San Francisco. Like it's way yeah, up Oakland, there. San Francisco. They're if you want to do that whole synonymous thing, Oakland and San Francisco are synonymous because they're separated by the bridge, which yeah, just that famously little bridge. partially collapsed in the '89 World Series. Yeah, so that, I didn't realize that was the bridge that San Francisco bridge. Like I think that it was the San Francisco bridge. I didn't realize Oakland was mm-hmm. way up there. And then I was looking at the, at the map, and San Diego's way out. San Diego's basically L.A. So the Chargers moving. Yeah, L.A. is not that. Far, I think like, I, I, I think when we may have mentioned when we had my little interview thing, I was like a friend of me and a friend of mine yeah. used to always say that we want to go to San Diego, and we were gonna like we used to watch Sanford and Son growing up. Oh, Sanford! Like and I don't know if you from um, if you ever watch like so Sanford and Son, <laughs> Lamont and his friend <laughs> Rilo, they used to always go in like they you know it was in San Diego they would go down to San Diego and okay. then they. Walk into Tijuana, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they could walk. To... And so we saw. We say, yeah. you know, when we when we're old enough, we're going to fly to San Diego and then walk to Tijuana <laughs> and go to the trip club. <laughs> we never did, but uh, yeah. Well, you, so after the, still can. Martin Rallo made it seem cool. <laughs> okay, so they thought it was cool. I, I, so I, you I were aware to to Mexico right now. of how far south San Diego. I don't know why I was thought San Diego was up by San Francisco. I guess all the sands because well, California, there's like sand. California is a California is a country all on its own. It really is. Like, it's so far, that's so a big far. State. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. You go from San Francisco to L.A., and that's like going four states in our, you know, in our geography, you know, where we are on the East Coast. But, yeah, I was so – as I was looking at this stuff, I was trying to just – I was trying to just get a picture. Well, first of all, I was trying to pick – I was trying to see – during the Oakland basketball scenes when those kids are playing basketball. Is MC Hammer anywhere around uh-huh. there? And then I fell down a rabbit hole because I was like, <laughs> well, this was 1992 in Oakland. Where was Hammer? Was Did we know Hammer, Hammer yet? Was he was he popular yet? And I was like, so oh, yeah, he was popular. trying to figure out whether or not MC Hammer is in the MCU. Yes. Yes, exactly, because he's from Oaktown, Oaktown 357. Right. And, and 92, Too Legit to Quit was already out. Like, he he already had a, right. several albums, and then I fell down an MC Hammer rabbit hole, and I didn't realize that he was in the Navy, like like he was in the Navy in the seventies. Like he grew up way before all this, so he was older in the nineties, and so mm-hmm. and that he was a, like a Christian rapper before he even made it. He was like a like he had a bunch of rap songs about God and stuff. I fell down this whole MC Hammer rabbit hole uh, just because of Black Panther. <laughs> and then I, and then I got in wow, that that's... mode of Wikipedia, random trivia about people. So Sterling K. Brown, you know who that is, right? Right. He plays. Uh, who does he play in that movie? What's his character's name? In jo- is he in Jobu? That's uh, he's he's. Yeah, because uh, in the beginning blah, of that, blah, blah. He's, he's the uncle. He's the uncle. That gets killed by the father and lied to, who um, yeah, Forrest Whitaker is the brother. Yeah, yeah. he's the uncle, and yeah, Njobu is his character's name. Njobu was Forrest Whitaker. No, that's Zuri. No, hold on. See now you're confusing me. Now you're confusing me. Now, Forrest Whitaker is Zuri. He says, "I am Zuri, son of Badu." Right. Njobu is uh. Killmonger's dad, uh, uh, Michael B. Jordan's dad, right? right? Killmonger's dad, right? In Jobu, but you know what? You know, the, played so by here's Sterling the thing. K. Brown. The thing. Yeah, <laughs> the the kid. I don't want to say that he's not a kid now, but Forrest Whitaker, um, Forrest Whitaker's, not Forrest Whitaker's character. Yeah, Forrest Whitaker's character is actually played by, um, Forrest. No. Denzel Whitaker. No way, really? Yeah. That's so, that's the, the the kid that had the thing the, the place like, young young Zuri. Yes. That's for that's Den his name is Denzel Whitaker. But it was it was it's weird because he's been in a movie like little six degrees of separation. He's been in a movie with Denzel Washington. That also it's had a Forrest Whitaker in it, and he, he was is, one of the great debaters. And he is Forrest Whitaker's son. No, he's not his real. No, he's not his son. It just oh, he's it's just not the a irony son. that his name is Denzel it, oh, Whitaker. Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, and here's pictures of him online when he was younger. He he started his career as a child actor in Training Day. Mm-hmm. Remember Training Day? Oh yeah, with Denzel. Oh my god, but he's not. He's not Forrest Whitaker's son. So you're right. He was born in Torrance, California, the son of Unalanda and Dale Whitaker. He went to Palos Verdes Peninsula High School. Home of the fighting. <laughs> uh what's the math? The fighting Panthers, the black and gold Panthers of Palos Verdes. You know Verdes what you would be good? You know what it'd be like <laughs> like let's say if one day we did decide to say, you know what, the nerd school is doing a comic book, right? Yeah. But it wouldn't. It would be like you know, characters that we've created. Okay. You would be good making up the history for these characters. History of the I characters, feel like, like what school they went to, like make you, up the... <laughs> like like that's your thing. Like I'm, I think we've we've maybe we've discussed this before when you guys was talking about like toys and things of that nature, uh... but like. If we're gonna I make was, a comic book, no, 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 the backup just, like the GI just, Joe just like, file yeah, cards, right? But like, so I was watching, we segueing, but I was watching. <laughs> we're was always gonna couple, be segueing. A couple of a couple of Sundays ago, Ethan Page, who's all ego, Egan Page, 
Ethan Page, who's all ego, Ethan Page from AW Wrestling, oh, Grant's right. favorite promotion. I'm but he that, does toy, know. he does weekly toy hunts. Okay. Um, oh yeah. So he did. He just did one with the Ass Boys. I thought you said Danhausen is the toy hunting guy. He he does all 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 of them dudes do it. All the wrestlers that, are toy hunters. That's a lot of them. That, like Ethan Page, him, um, Danhausen, and Brody King. They call themselves the Goro Bros. They do a lot of toy hunts together. Anywho, he just did. <laughs> uh, um, Anywho, like usually usually his toy hunts come out of them doing like you know how to do appearances. So they may be at some toy store doing an appearance, like yeah, right uh-huh. before a show. Yeah, they'll so sign he'll, autographs yeah, do, and whatever. Yeah. You know, so he'll do toy hunt inside of that. So him and the ass boys. Um, yeah, uh, Mr. Ass's children. Those of you who right. don't know about wrestling, there was a wrestler named Mr. Ass. And now he's got two well, children about ass, man. that are wrestlers, and they're called the ass boys. Well, they call a gun club, but Dan Housen coined them the ass boys. Oh, he did. And then people will yell things to Mr. Ass now because he's daddy ass because he's got two sister kids. Sister be daddy ass. <laughs> and they'll yell sister be daddy ass, I guess. And that's why when every every time Art yells that, I want to put it at the beginning credits of yeah, yeah, so I think it's in there now. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But like so they were talking about growing up as kids, yeah, playing with toys and things. Yeah. And how they would actually have like they would build set pieces and thing, but then they would actually go in and create storylines. And it's like you think about it, like as kids, that's what we always did. We always yeah. oh you yeah know, we create and, create a storyline, oh, yeah. create a back history. Yeah, well, Andy and I short. Andy and I did some really serious playing as we were older. It was probably when we were too old to be playing with toys. Like we shouldn't be playing anymore when we're like developing big long storylines and like yelling cut. Okay, now my turn and I take <laughs> over and now you you know and we would my favorite thing to do is when we mixed all the genres together. Like mm-hmm. you got a big pile of Star Wars, He Man, GI Joe, Care Bears, you know, <laughs> Night Rider, you know, Dark Strawberry Shortcake, yeah, whatever. whatever. Well, we didn't have, we didn't have sisters like out. you, but you had everything, and you just mix right. them all together, and then you, 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 you know, just mix and match. It could be like. Uh, Trap Jaw and uh, Cobra Commander are on a mission to versus destroy Mech and Neck and Beast Man. And f- yeah, right. It right, right, could be versus. But see, like, like Andre see, the I, Giant, I think, and you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. You like all of it, like the extra minutia backstory. I love. Minutia. Like I feel like you really, really diving in. You love diving into that. I'm fascinated by where people grew up. Like, there's something to me about. Like the school I went to and the high school I went to was so tiny and small that, you know, there was, I know you knew every single kid from three grades below you and three grades above you. I, I still know them all and what they're all doing. I could probably tell you what everybody, almost everybody in my class is doing now and what their jobs, you know, whatever. So, but to me, I'm also fascinated by the fact that, the only thing we had in common is the geography of where our parents ha- fucked. <laughs> like <laughs> all, all our parents happened to get pregnant and fuck at the same time and had us. And then we, that's where we went to school. And it's the people we happened to go to school with. And now we're like interlocked sort of for life uh-huh. that affects you. Like things people said to me affected me and things I said to other people, we affected each other by being around each other. And it's just all by chance and that blows my mind. And then, so just to think right. like, and everybody knows like what famous people went to their school. Like nobody mm-hmm. went to my school. But the fact that Denzel Whitaker went to the same school as Jay Billis from ESPN, <laughs> uh, that's something that you now know. You. Palos Verdes <laughs> Peninsula like, High School, awesome. home of the Panthers. Uh, right. And then you you picture it, you know, like he probably knew that going to school. Maybe he didn't know it, or who knows? But uh you know, and everybody had a team mascot. You know, everybody wore their team color. Sometimes, you know, some people didn't give a shit about it, but <laughs> just the fact there's all these schools all over the world that are making people uh, be who they are. Like you are who you are based on how you grew up, partly, and you you grow and change, and it's all everybody. Right. And it doesn't stop when you're a kid, but those are formative years. But it's also like I feel like everybody you interact with throughout your life it's like a journey and you are affected a certain way like 
the four of us on this nerd school podcast. I think we're mm-hmm. different people. Right. Since we started this podcast, not like drastically, we're all still already formed people, but like this has affected us in a different way. Like we know each other right. definitely more than we did four years ago or whatever when we started this for three or I don't know how long we do it. It's not four years, but it's three years or whatever. And like we f- find ourselves learning and growing from each other. I don't know. I'm just, I guess, I don't know what I'm exactly. Uh, I guess people's backstories is, is funny to me. Like mm-hmm. just to read that and hear that. And, and I love Wikipedia that it's got right. everybody's early life. It's got their birthdays, where they were born. How they and, and, then see, and then the way, the way that I am, like, I love knowing that stuff as well. Yeah. But I'd want my Wikipedia page to be like three sentences. Right. Yeah. Cause like, like just, it, you want to keep I, it secret? I, it's not even secret. Like I love to me, it's like I've always felt like I like having that mysterious nature. Yeah. Like when yeah. people don't like when people like people automatically assume things about me. So when I can sit there and show them things, they'll be like, oh wow. You know, I yeah, didn't like, know that. Like I had so no idea like, art had three like, nipples. Right. So you was looking through my Wikipedia page and you'd be like, <laughs> oh wait, wait, what? He he does what? That makes no sense. That's not that guy. But then it'd be like, I am that guy. So, <laughs> well, how big does Nerds will have to get uh, to get us a Wikipedia page? I don't know. It's got to get I bigger mean, than it is. Because I think you can actually, can't you? Wikipedia is like, people can add, you can add and remove shit on your own, right? Well, Isn't, I think you have to, you have to become a Wikipedia editor. And I think you there's some criteria to become an editor. I don't think it's super mm-hmm. hard criteria. I think we probably could both do it. I don't know what the criteria is. What I love about things, or we could just like just create a, a wiki. Just you know, just this is the nerd school wiki. There's our own wiki you know, for the thing we've created. Right. So this kid, Denzel Dominic Whitaker, was born in 1990. I guess he's not a kid anymore. He's 32. But mm-hmm. I love little like trivia facts about him. So he was he was uh, a member on Nickelodeon's. All that, which I don't know what that is, maybe 2004, 2004. Well, all that was like almost like the kids' version of In Living Color. Oh, well, I was like, yeah, a, yeah a there were a lot show. of little, I don't want to say little, but a lot of actors and actresses that came out of all of that. Okay. Uh, he, so when he was acting as a teenager, he did his schoolwork via email. And According to Wikipedia, he was named after actor Denzel Washington, but Whitaker disputed that fact on the Oprah Winfrey show while promoting the movie The Great Debaters, only to learn, la- learn only to learn later from his father that in fact Denzel Washington was his namesake. That's where he got his name. Can you uh, imagine going on Oprah and saying that that's not true? Not that's true not true. At all. That's not where I got my like name. Like you're on Oprah saying it's not true. And then and your then dad says Yeah, it is true. Well, actually, son. Yeah, so oh he uh he he voiced somebody on the boondocks and on Black Dynamite, the animated series. He played Donald the Account. Dynamite. That was a cool show. Black Dynamite. So, you know, every but that here's the other thing. Every time I look on anybody's anything, I find all this stuff that I didn't know was right. just shows that's the way I used to be when I used to look like whenever I would like look for like a I hear something about some movie. And I jump on IMDb. Yeah. And I always found myself looking at like oh, so the many trivia movies. based on like, oh wow. That's kind of interesting, you know. The trivia is the best. I mean, that's that alone, that's something we could get sidetracked on. We can just check out the Black Panther trivia and go through that on on uh on IMT IMDb, which I'm I'm kind of on there now. But the other <laughs> couple different little things I'll do. Well, Sterling K. Brown is what I was starting with, who played in Jobu. Mm-hmm. Uh, he went to the Mary Institute in St. Louis Country Day School, home of the Rams, and he went to the same school as Joe Buck and Vincent Price. So he's from St. Louis, where my wife's from. And I meant to ask her, like, hey, do you know St. Louis Country Day School? What's it like? But I think it's a very, like, fancy, rich people school. Uh, Does she know Joe Buck? My wife? Uh-huh. She knows who he, She knew Jack Buck's name better than Joe Buck because she grew up, like, Cardinals you know, listen to Cardinals games and stuff. Uh, my wife doesn't like sports at all, but she she has said on the American Timelines podcast that she's she watched the World Series when the Cardinals were in it. And I was like, why did you watch the World Series? You would never watch the World Series now. She was like, 
we had three channels. <laughs> like I had to watch something. <laughs> so yeah, you know, we didn't have the internet. I didn't have anything to do. I didn't have mur- eight hundred murder podcasts to listen to. You <laughs> know, there's nothing else <laughs> to do back then. Uh, and then Forrest Whitaker went to Palisades Charter High School, which was at the same school we just talked about. Pal- that was a different Palisades, home of the Dolphins. Yeah, it's not the. Pal- well, you know some. You know that they're like some of these schools' names. Like it'll be in this state, that state, this small. Like they'll all be named after this James Woods High School. James Woods High School. That's from uh, is that uh, Family Guy? Family Guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's like it's just James Woods. It's the James Woods High School <laughs> in every small city in America. There you go. Well, there is like a yeah, like or some of those old presidents, Franklin Pierce High School, or whatever. Some of those old presidents nobody even knows anymore. Anyway, Forrest Whitaker went to the same school as Will I Am. Katie Seagal and Susanna Hoffs from the Bengals. Do you know who Susanna Hoffs is, Art Star? I know the Bengals. I don't know her, but I know um, she's the, the hot. Um, she's the hot name. one. I'm, I'm Walk Eastern. like an Egyptian. She's, she's the, the hot one. one. You know who Katie Seagal is. <laughs> oh yeah, I know Katie from um, Married, Married with Children. <laughs> In your world, is Katie Seagal related to Steven Seagal? <laughs> yes, they are the same person. Maybe not. I don't know. But those Forrest Whitaker was at home of the Dolphins and Susanna Hoffs. I wonder if they knew each other. Are they the same age? I don't know. We could look that up. And then Chadwick Boseman himself. was. <laughs> you know where he was born? Do you know about him? He's a local guy. I know about you. I know about Mr. Boseman. You know everything about him? I don't know everything about him. You know what? He Which played part? a really good. He played. T- TBJ mentioned this last episode. Yeah, his James Brown, his Thurgood Marshall, and his Jackie Robinson, phenomenal. Yeah, he's played phenomenal. Big, and he's he's. Uh, I thought he was British because he does such a good. Uh, I mean, his African accent. His enunci- in, in Black he has Panther. he has really good enunciation. Like, really good. He had a really good. Uh, what is it, a speech coach? Is that what actors have? Do you guys get speech coaches? A vocal vocal coach, I think they call them. Well, let's, you know, yeah, like let's say if you if you have to speak in a different language, dialect, or, dialect, dialect coach. coach, yeah, dialect coach, yeah, 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 yeah. So I I was, was shocked that he wasn't British because I think well the other guy in this is British the uh, the guy who plays uh, oh that guy the guy that's in everything now. Uh, the guy that's in everything. Uh, Daniel Kalu- Kalua. Kaluuya. Kalua. Kalua. Wakabi. He plays Wakabi. Yeah. He's British. Yeah, he's British. Uh, but Chadwick Boseman was born in Anderson, South Carolina. Not far from here. From Charlotte. He graduated from T.I. Hannah High School. And what year did he graduate? We want to guess. Without Googling it. What year did he graduate um, high school? Let me see. Uh, 90, 94. Ah, oh, close. You're so close. 95. 95. Yep. You're confusing him with me. I'm class of 94. What's that? You're trying to figure, just, just kind of trying to figure out how old um, he is, how old he was. Well, I know how old he was, but like trying to like, yeah, 18 range. Yeah. I'm thinking it's 94, 95. I went he, with 94. He played on the basketball team in high school at T.I. Hannah High School, home of the Yellow Jackets. He went to the same school as Jim Rice and Martavius Bryant. Did you know Jim Rice? Aren't you a big Jim Rice fan? Um, Yeah, I was a big Jim. I actually, actually, Jim Rice, um, a couple of years ago, was one of the hardest cards to use in MLB to show. Okay, so... MLB the show, a little sidetrack here. How do you how do our cards involve? Like you're it's a video game to play where you're playing baseball. Well, this it's but like you have how to you collect play... cards. Right, but it's like Snap. So like if in Snap, you know that there's Marvel a Snap. Kind of... Not a sponsor. <laughs> we, we wish they were a sponsor, but not a we sponsor. We love Marvel Snap. We're all addicted to Marvel Snap. All of us nerds. But like, so you know there's a shit ton. Of cards that you can get, but you don't all you don't have them off top, right? 
Yeah, so, so it's kind of like Madden, like Madden Ultimate Team. It's just, it just like right? Ultimate Team. Yeah, just yeah. like Madden Ultimate Team. Okay, I but get it. The, so basically, once you, like, and it's weird because, you know, there's all of this weird video game ling- lingo, like the cards cracked or the cards OP. Oh, I don't and know like, what that means. I don't know what well, anything. Well, cracked means it's like, they'll say, like, and like, like I said, basketball, like, like I said, a basketball video game, yeah. If the card is really good, they'll say that the card's a cheat code. Okay. So like in the I've baseball heard cheat game, code and like beast or like cheat code. Mode, cheat I've heard code. that as a nickname for uh, a a football player, or something that's really unbelievable. Like that guy's fast and everybody. It's cheat code. I've heard that. Right. So what's the crack? But like crack is like let's say let's say if if this card, no matter what, he getting a hit, he going yard. Uh, if he hard to get out, <laughs> he crack. And going yard means is, is a home run. That's when you go yard. You, you, you go know, yard. You go yeah, run. I've heard that makes sense to me. Humdinger. Like, yeah, Does so, anybody so, say humdinger anymore? That's a humdinger. <laughs> nah. But it's like the card. So the nah, card. Like, stupid like let's say let's let's say if you get like a live series card, right? And let's say if the players having, you know, that like let's say they went zero for four today. Yeah, in real life, yes. In the game, in the card, it'll affect it'll affect the way the, the card. Yeah, so the video game, game is that smart online that it knows what's happening in the real well, they, world. They have so someone, Jim Rice, they, if Jim they, Rice came out of retirement, or probably back he to came life, out of retirement, his card would be <laughs> shitty. And, he, they, and they made him a live series card. <laughs> it would be shitty. But his card is good because he was a legend and he was good when he played. Right. But you're right, saying this card is the hardest to realize, get? No, it was hardest to play with because oh. of his swing. Like, like, like it's this 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 game is all about timing, right? Okay. It's yeah. all about timing. That's what baseball so, is. Yeah, yeah, and, and like you know, like some people, Brad P. Fundak. You yes. know, it's like they shout yeah, out to Brad P. Fundak or listeners. You don't know who Brad P. Fundak is. How that would translate? How that would translate over into a video game? But it's like, let's say if if you're drunk, right? Your <laughs> hand eye coordination is fucking off. So if you're sitting there trying to play, and let's say, like, let's say if it's like last night, I wasn't drunk, but like you last were night drunk. I was playing, and I was playing a, as a tops now moment where yeah. I had to pay, face Felix Bautista, the Mountain. He's a Baltimore <laughs> Oreo. Closer. He's a Baltimore Oreo closer. Dude so can hit topic. on the regular like yeah. a hundred. 104 miles an hour. Okay. Right? So Fast in real ball. life, you mean the real guy, not the video game guy. The real guy, right. But the game, it does that. So in the game, so I'm sitting there, it's the bottom of the ninth, and I'm trying to get on base. And if I ain't got the, you know, this card that I'm playing with, I don't know how to hit with him, right? So yeah, if I don't have practice. this timing down. So each player, each player hmm. bats differently. Each player bats differently. Like, so if you're playing the actually, game, so you're playing the game as the Baltimore Orioles. And mm-hmm. you're and you Cal Ripken uh, Cal gets Ripken. up to bat, right? Up to bat, right? And you're yes. playing him. And He's gonna Ripken be. Stand. You're gonna have to utilize him differently than you utilize, uh, say, uh, Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray. Everyone else's yeah, favorite like Baltimore. Different. So when Eddie Murphy so gets like, up, Eddie Murray gets up. Then Eddie you have Murphy, to. Eddie I said Murphy. I said Murphy. I did. I watched <laughs> a lot of old SNL. <laughs> then you have to. You have to adjust your. You have play, to adjust. You have to adjust your play to play mm-hmm. Eddie Murray. That seems exactly way too just like and way too hard. And why I don't like I mean, the just like 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 you if you play Madden, if you play Madden, I put it like on you had like if you I put on rookie mode and I just right, you dominate. Put on rookie, but like let's say nine touchdowns let's game. Say you choose, <laughs> let's say but but let's say you jump online, right? Yeah. And oh yeah. Then I get my ass kicked. A, right. So you're sitting there, you have to say, okay, well, this team plays this way against that team. I know if I try to run it up the middle, his D is going to be looking for that. So now you got to start looking for A gaps and B gaps. So it be it ends up becoming (laughs) like this pure simulation. Yeah. And it's what like literally like I watch people play this game on Twitch. Yeah. And I'll be like, man, this dude, like I played a ranked game yesterday. And I forgot if you play a ranked game, you literally have to play all nine innings. 
I won two you to one. You can't turn it off. But it was like, right. Because if, if you turn it off, you get them, you start 0 and 1 in rank season. And that when shit counts. When you're playing like, a stranger I'm... online, do you ever kind of wonder if they're naked? <laughs> I'm sure they probably. Listen, I play on yeah, like we we I play on the switch. I play on the switch, right? So, so what you're saying is you play naked on the toilet. No, this is what I want to say. Like, <laughs> if, let's say if I'm playing someone else who who's also playing on the switch. For all I know, they could be on the toilet taking the shit <laughs> while they're playing the game. Like there are memes online where people are like, yeah, I got me a switch so I can play games while I'm taking the shit. You know, like. And it As only you know, took our forty. Takes no electronic. How many minutes into this podcast did it take for us to to talk about shitting? That's gonna be amazing. Like <laughs> PBJ will be amazed. We went this long. I don't know how long we've been on here. I don't even I'll have to look later. But and we didn't talk about shit. It's like almost right. That's a li- li- more than a half an hour in, and we just now started talking about yeah. shit. And all just, because just we brought up shit Jim just came up. All because Chadwick Jim Boseman Rice. went Jim to the Rice. same school as Jim Rice and Jim Rice, Martavis Bryant. <laughs> all because of Jim Rice, and Martavis Bryant, who's been having a really good season and seasoning, really good season. In the XFL, he plays in the XFL. So why is he playing? In... Why is he playing the XFL? What happened to Martavis Bryant? He he just he was a flop. He just never made it. I thought he was good in the NFL. I think he I kept, remember. Kept, kept getting cut off of different teams. Yeah, he just like so maybe he'll come back and this is. But he's he been needed. making some unbelievable catches. I think he played for the St. Louis Battle Cats. I think that's what they call it. <laughs> Whatever they're called, something Battle Tacks, Battle Takes. I don't know. Well, Jim Rice, Some I wanted. So when I was a kid, we would have, or, you know, me and my brothers collected the baseball cards. We, you know, you'd walk up to the mm-hmm. store and buy baseball cards, and you wanted the bubble gum or whatever, and and we collected them. Mm-hmm. We had those little separator things where you you you'd separate all the players the by sleeve. by teams. Well, it wasn't right. even sleeves. It was like a, a it was like a case. You had this case, and you open it up, and you had. And you labeled them like the Phillies go here, the Reds oh, okay. go here, the Red, you know, you in order. Right. And you put them in their team order. You try to collect each team, you know, full team. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, I still need the third baseman for whatever. Well, you know, you see, train. they do that. They do that now. They, that's a none of them that, were ever in but plastic. Then also, in the game, in the game, one of the biggest things in the game is theme teams. So you so you get a chance to you can create a diamond dynasty team. Let's say the all-time greatest Cleveland Guardians or the all-time greatest whatever. And like those, they release cards from those different teams, and like a lot of people they'll they'll buy them from the the marketplace. Yeah. They'll grind yeah, out just it. to get them so they can. Have yeah, because they know they have play. a generation of kids who grew up collecting this stuff and buying baseball cards and buying this stuff. They have a. Everyone that plays video games now were those kids, and they can sell you right. virtual cards of shit. Virtual That's why card. I like these. And what are they called? NFTs. That, I'm NFT. not surprised that that happens. Anyway, but then you Jim also Rice, when I had Jim like Rice's, I remember I had Jim Rice's card, mm-hmm. and he just looked like a, a very nice gentleman. He just looked like <laughs> he had a nice, nice clean gentleman. mustache. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, he just looked like a nice guy, and like I wanted. I wanted him to be my neighbor or something, you know, like that kind of. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, he's and like you could be Mr. like, Rogers. say, my neighbor was Jim Rice. My neighbor was Jim. He just seemed like a a good guy to hang out. And I guess I probably liked him. His name was Rice, like you know, like a food. Like it was I remember when potato. I was a kid. Yeah. Um, I was in the Junior Oreos, which was like, I don't know. I mean, so it's basically what it is happening. Like at the beginning of the season, you get like. You, it's a club that you could join. I forgot how much shit was, but you'd get ten tickets to the baseball game, and you okay. also get you get to go to like a bullpen party that they had. Really, to so the major and, league game, the major league field. Yeah, yeah, you would get ten tickets. Okay, so like you know, me, so me and my dad would go. Yeah, and we and one time we had this thing with like it was a bullpen party that we went to before the game, and the bullpen little baby party, art star went to this bullpen party. <laughs> little tiny baby get, art star with a hat. You got an Orioles hat on. When you're going to this, yeah, and I think I did. Yeah, oh, you say, yeah, of course. You, you got, got your, you, go you got to, your, you, go to, you got your mitt in your hand. And you got your glove. Yeah, you brought your you glove. Your glove you caught a foul yeah, you ball. Could, you could nah, but you could have sat like way up, like nowhere near catching them. Well, ball was even coming in that direction. Yeah, but as a kid, you, you had your glove with you. You thought you'd catch anyway, it. Yeah. yeah. So we went to this the, this bullpen party, and at the bullpen party, they had 
you know, some players there so they can, you know, sign your autograph or whatever. Yeah. And I got a chance to meet Eddie Murray, right? Oh, that's cool. And it was it was weird though, because you know, like I've I've had the same face since I was a kid, right? <laughs> so, like I'm sitting there they signing shit or whatever. And I remember the the one the first thing I ever remember him saying to me is, Why don't you smile? <laughs> like he, Eddie Murray really act told me, why don't you smile? He so I've did? always had the yeah, I've always had the I don't smile face. Yeah, because you always yeah, that's what everybody's right. always surprised when they find out that you're that's why people think I'm you're, mean. A, you're a happy go lucky guy on a podcast. They're like, Isn't that guy was mad? Like he never smiled. No, he's like he's yeah, hilarious like, he's and funny. Like he's mean as fuck. Like he's yeah. gonna eat my face off. So Eddie Murray had that cool I w- wanted to make sure I looked him up, but he always had that cool like sideburns into the mustache thing right uh which is right. cool as hell and he's still alive Six, he's 67 only yep still alive like i feel like he is should be way older than that but uh so did you so you got to meet eddie murray and he told I you to smile to so uh, do you do you uh is your facial hair the way you wear it because of eddie murray Oh, no. Did you I ever remember, think about Eddie Murray that another, way? Another side story. <laughs> yeah. I remember I used to work at Woolworth's department stores. Oh, yes. We talked and about that one, on the Happy Hour podcast. And one time this dude came in and he told me that I looked like Eddie Murray. Like I guess because Eddie the Murray. time I had like a lot of hair on my head. Yeah. And, and my sideburns were long. And I was like, bruh, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. But I was like, okay. If that's what you need to make you happy, you know. I uh, guess maybe it was a redneck Baltimore thing. Well, I don't know. Eddie Murray uh, attended Locke High School in Los Angeles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> their team colors were Columbia Blue and Gold, home of the Saints. And he went to Fred Barry, went to school with that same school. You know who Fred Barry is, right? Rerun. Rerun, baby. And Ozzie Smith went to that school. The uh, Wizard. Yeah, Ozzie Smith, man. J Rock. Uh, let's see if I know any of these other people. There's a bunch of police officers. I don't know why they're famous. <laughs> uh, Fred Barry, though. Rerun. Eddie Murray went to see Eddie Murray, Ozzie Smith, and rerun from what's happened. All went to the same school, and you all know it. They're home of the Saints, Lock High School. Now everyone who listens to the Nerd School podcast knows that. And they're all, know. frankly, better off for having known it. And all that is because right. we talked about Chadwick Boseman going and to the same Black school Panther as Jim movie. Rice. And right. You're, Look at that trick. Look at that trickle down effect. Yeah, we got into Eddie Murray because of the baseball thing, and what got into a little bit, a little tidbit of Art Star's childhood. We all pictured Art Star as a little kid. <laughs> I pictured you ex- <laughs> exactly <laughs> the same, except only uh, four feet tall. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> as you're somehow smushed down, and it, uh, and then and it with a wad of bubble gum in his mouth, because you know, like baseball players. You know, chewing tobacco. Yeah, so the chewing tobacco. Like then some you always had like a wide of bubble gum. So you had a wide of big league chew. Yeah, you in get your that mouth. big league chew, man. Big league chew was the best. I used to I, love whenever big I got league. big league chew, yeah. I was I was I loved it. Now like what's your friend, favorite flair flavor? Do you like just the bubblegum flavor? I just I, like the bubblegum, but like the grape was pretty good too. But it was like one of those. Say, things, I always got like, grape. That was my favorite. The grape. I would go that we go to the store like 7 Eleven or something. Yeah. But like my parents would never let me get it. I guess because it was gum, and you know, yeah. parents they don't want your kid. He like, ah, oh, the gum's going to get on the carpet. Blah yeah, it's blah. It's going to get all over everything. Yeah. But then when I got older, when I was older, making my own money, you bought your own big time, league chew. I used to always have like when I worked at Ames Department Store. Yeah. I used to always have big league chew. A lot That's of times. Funny like, now that I think about, about it, I never really thought about this, but. Big League Chew is is like play tobacco. Right. Because it's like shredded that like tobacco. Horrible. That's what it was right. supposed to be. I never even thought about that. But because they had candy cigarettes, they had candy chewing right. tobacco. That's so that crazy. That was pretty cool, too. Like, <laughs> it didn't make you want to. I guess it made you felt like you was cool. You did. You it's felt like, like you were. Uh, like you could blow uh, the powder out of the shit. Yeah. I like the gum better than the, the chalky bit shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they had yeah. the ones that were like those. Neck away from consistency. Yeah. yeah. Which, like, you can bite them, eat them. 
Like the ones that came the in the one baseball where... card packs, those little rectangles of gum. Those hard right. pieces of gums every time. Oh, those were shitty. Well, 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 no, you have the ones that they had like the white people, white paper around it, and you could like blow in it and like a little puff of, I guess, whatever the flower or whatever the fuck was on Big it League would chew? come out. But then it was just a, it was a cylinder stick of gum. In big, and it was like made by Big League Chew? Like a, no, it wasn't made by Big League Chew. Oh, oh, oh you're League a different Chew. kind of gum. But it came in a box. It came in an actual fake cigarette box. But oh, then you also yeah, had yeah, the one yeah. That was but that like, was a gum, the, wasn't it? That was the, just not candy. the hard candy. Oh, but the yeah, gum but they had something that was gum as well. Oh, they yeah, had yeah, gum yeah, ones yeah. as well. I think you, yeah, I remember that now. But then you also had the ones that was like I say that hard. I don't think I can say it was made of the same consistency as like the Necco wafers. Yeah, and a yeah. little heart candy, right you on. Get. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that same kind of consistency. Yeah, and and the gum, that gum lasted what thirty seconds before it's out of flavor. Right. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> God, cause it. Did he? Yeah. So you, like, sh- you got older, you get a pack of baseball cards that still had the gum in it. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Candy. It's like this is a pack yeah. of baseball cards from '82, and it's now twenty, you know, two thousand one. And it's still, I, I gotta it's taste still that the gum. same cardboard consistency. Just a couple as years it was ago, in '82, somebody, g- <laughs> somebody gave me a pack of cards from Three's Company. It was from the '70s. Three's Company playing or like trading cards, and it still had the gum in it. Sure enough, you know, I put some of that in my mouth, but it was like <laughs> tasted like an envelope, which it did then too. Right. I can't believe I put it in my mouth, but it wouldn't even like I that didn't have enough said. saliva to make it into gum. I couldn't even do it. Uh, <laughs> So right, so probably couldn't even reconstitute that if you wanted to. <laughs> Back to Chadwick Boseman. Here's something that's amazing about a lot of these actors in in Black Panther. So when he was in high school, he wrote his first first play, which means he wrote multiple ones. Uh, his first play was called Crossroads, and he staged it at the, his school after a classmate was shot and killed. Uh, so that was kind of cool of Chadwick Boseman. He's a playwright. Uh, and so is uh the lady who plays. Uh, let me find it. Uh, I don't want to be wrong about that. Oh, there's a lot of play- playwrights in this. So, um, dang it, who's the one who plays? Oh, Lupita Nyong'o. Uh huh. You know, you probably know her for lots of stuff, right? She's been in a lot of things. She's been in some things. I feel like I didn't write any of this down, but she's like written plays, uh, and uh, uh, the one who plays Okoye, Denai Gurira, Gurira, Denai Gurira, Gurira is that how they say it? She was a, yep. she's a playwright, uh, of Broadway play, a Broadway play called Eclipsed. She was nominated for a Tony Award. Uh, she's written several plays. She debuted a play at the Goodman Theater where Steve Snodgrass, friend of the show, uh, worked with John Moore. They worked there. Anyway, there's all these play like all these people aren't just great actors; they're playwrights too. Um, but back to Chadwick Boseman, really quick. One other thing: he went to Howard University, and Felicia Rashad from the Cosby Show was his mentor, and helped raise funds for him to get into some good acting programs. And Denzel Washington. Gave some money towards that too. So there you go. Little Denzel Washington, little Felicia Rashad. A little and she black was, royalty. And you know who Felicia Rashad was married to? What great Minnesota Viking, right? Ah, my. Yes, one of Remember the. Remember, he used to have that. What that? What that? Um, was it? It's it's a uh, sports show. He used to be. I know on. what you're going to say. NBA inside stuff. Inside. St- it Inside came on, used to go on Saturday afternoon, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, which I was always confused. Like, he was a football player. Oh, excuse right. me. Right. He was a football <laughs> player. Why is he on NBA? In, it was Inside Stuff, I want to say. Inside Stuff. Yeah, boom. Ha. Mod Rashad. I used to watch that. I don't know why. I think I only watched that because that, if I remember correctly, that came on right before American Gladiators. <laughs> so, or wrestling, one of the two. Is that, is that show still on? What happened? Is that show still on? NBA Inside Stuff? Did I lose you? I don't. I think oh. they do it at on. I think they do it on TNT at the beginning of uh, 
the NBA games, I think they call that NBA inside stuff. I think that's what that's called. NBA inside Which stuff. Can... Yeah, I think it's still on, yeah. Oh, maybe it's not. It's had four revivals. Can you hear me still? I can hear you. Okay. Because I, I kept getting, a, I got a message that my internet connection was unstable. Um, I mean, there's so many things. So Andy Circus, who plays Claw, his father was an Iraqi Armenian gynecologist. Oh. You didn't know that? Uh, Michael B. Jordan. I did to, know that. You went to, You did know that? <laughs> Michael B. Jordan. I didn't know to, that. I said I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't. Michael B. Jordan went to Michael Newark. Michael B. Jordan went to what? Newark Arts High School, home of the Jaguars. Tisha Campbell and Savion Glover both went there. And I found this thing on the internet that oh, said Michael can't. B. Jordan said he was bullied by Laurel. Lor- you know who that is? Radio personality in New York. And so you can see the interview with no. her. She denying it. <clears throat> um, excuse me. Uh, there's a lot of these people that did some crazy things. Um, some stuff. They did some stuff. They lived some lives. Uh, but let's real quick they jump some things. Let's jump into the trivia or goofs. Do we like goofs? How do you get to goofs? You know how G O O F G O O F S. Like bad, but you know how IMDb goofs, has G O O F goofs. Yeah, goofs like goofy. They have things like that are mistakes. Yeah, I, I, I said, huh? Oh, I'm waiting for you to go. <laughs> like, I All was. Right. I was about to get tanked tied. I caught myself. So I, I caught myself. So around 39 minutes in the movie when Shuri gives T'Challa the new shoes called, she calls them sneakers. She mentions that they absorb sound those? and allow silent footsteps. Yeah, she's like, what are those? Why are you, why are you wearing those sandals? And T'Challa demonstrates <laughs> you can't hear his shoes. But later in the film, at around 52 minutes, T'Challa runs up a ramp wearing the sneakers and you hear the sound of footsteps. That's a big mistake. It's a big <laughs> fuck up. I want my money back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I noticed this part. At around 57 minutes in, when Claw is being interrogated by Everett Ross, you continue to hear Claw speak while the camera is shown outside the interrogation room with the camera focused on T'Challa. When T'Challa begins to walk, you can see Claw behind him, and whilst you can hear him still talking, his lips aren't moving within the interrogation room in the background. So when when you see stuff like this, do you go back into the movie and try to pause it so you can see it? Yeah, I got to go Like, do you want to see, now. like, the bull mic overhang? Like, oh, yeah. instead of the bull mic, and let me go see if I caught the bull mic. Yeah. Well, let me see if I see that cup. Do that I see that thing that's in the, the background? Game. Yeah, the coffee. Yeah, the famous uh, Starbucks that's in the Game of Thrones or whatever. Uh, they say that uh, Chadwick Boseman's beard changes in length from take to take, which I didn't really notice. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Goofs. I'm just reading stuff about like Shuri's war paint. <laughs> she couldn't have put on the war paint that fast and I don't think I care about the goofs. Sometimes the goofs are just them picking it. Like, it's very nitpicky. Very yeah. nit- and it, But then, if you think about it, nitpicky is a part of nerd culture lore, it is, right? It is definitely nerd culture. Because it's like, well, you know, actually, he didn't yeah. say that in that issue. It was an issue such and such where it was first mentioned. You should tell your viewers that. Yeah. Well, here's a, here's a little tidbit that I didn't know. Apparently, during an interview with Michael Martin on All Things Considered, uh, Denai Guerrero, Guerrero, I'm not going to be able to say it, Okoye, who plays Okoye. Call him Michonne. Call him Michonne or Okoye. Okoye said that the language spoken by Wakandans is a real language. And it's it's called Zosa, X-H-O-S-A, a South Africa. Zosa, Zosa, a South African language characterized mm-hmm. by clicks and glottal stops. It's a, she said it's the same language that is native to well, Nelson, if you, if you Nelson have, Mandela. If you had the um, subtitles on, if you yeah, if you have the subtitles on, 
on a movie, it'll tell you when they when they start speaking, yeah. it'll have it. And, so and you know what, that that's what it's speaking. So it's, and, and what it means, yeah. I it mean, says, it's not it's not like it's not like they it's not like Klingon or uh, yeah, like a made up. What's language. another language that was recently made up? Uh, or Dothraki. Like Dothraki is a made up language, right? But I think I thought I read somewhere that Dothraki is based on some other kind of something. But well, you know, but, a lot of these languages they're they're based on something. But then they're also like, can you just imagine being that person who has to create oh, this language, and or then just yeah, or the person that there's probably the person that has to, like you said, dialect coach has to yeah. sh- help them all speak this language correctly. You know, everybody, you know, some have different levels of probably understanding of it, um, and so that that kind of brings up a thing that I. I kind of thought fleetingly through the movie. Sometimes it bothered me. Sometimes it didn't. It's like, sometimes I was like, well, why are they speaking English? If if we're in Wakanda, why are they speaking English just to each other? Like, <laughs> like, and it's, and there's one part when his, when uh, uh, T'Challa goes under the, he goes to the ancestral plane where they bury him. And he goes and talks to his father right away. Or at the beginning, they're speaking mm-hmm. English. And right as I thought, like I even said it out loud. I was like, why would they be speaking English to each other? Like, you're in heaven with your father. Why wouldn't you speak your native language? As soon as I said that, they both started speaking in their the South African language, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, so then I was like, oh, oh, oh touche. Somebody's listening to me. Like, they just changed it. <laughs> so they go in and they do go in and out of it uh-huh. here and there. And I think if we really. Isn't that like a, a, a movie trope thing anyway, where like you're watching something and the person will say something in their native language? But then they switch into English, and then sometimes they'll go back to it. But like that's actually just the way it was planned, and it's not like, yeah. I just I I, I wonder what's behind the plan. Like, is 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 there so much thought put into it? Like, well, when they're saying certain things, they're in their native language. Or like, if it's but then you also got to realize, like, like I have pe- I have friends now. Who will watch things? They'll say you got to watch this on Netflix, or yeah. you got to watch that. And and I, I I am I guess <laughs> I I can say I can probably call myself this. I am some so somewhat up, and this could be just me making this word up, but I'm just adding I'm adding two words. <laughs> I love this. I'm making it's it. an art but star I, word. Yeah, I kind of consider myself somewhat of a lingo file. Okay. Right? That's probably a word. So it's like if I'm watching something, I can I have to watch it in its intended language because the you know and shit get lost in translation. But they're like, you gotta watch like this movie, this show on uh, Netflix now called Triptych. Friend of mine said like, oh, you gotta watch Triptych. It's yeah. so good. So I started watching it, and I'm like, hey, something is off about this. So then I went and I looked and I was like, oh, you know, stupid Netflix. You're in America. Let me just automatically give you English. Uh, so like, yeah. oh, okay, this thing was dubbed. That's why I was off. So like, I had to watch it in Spanish for me to actually want to get into it. Okay. But, you know, like, like I said, I have friends who but they do you don't speak like Spanish, reading. or did you read no, it? No, like you read the subtitles. So you well, had subtitles. The original language uh, is Spanish, but so the subtitles should have been English. Yeah, so you you'd but, rather them speak Spanish and read right. the English. Like like when I watch anime, I when I also like I I have a hard on for Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> but uh when I watch anime, I I'm only older. watch anime to where it was intended to be watched. Like I don't want like I you I'm want it speaking them, Japanese and right, you're reading. Right. If you're not subtitles. speaking the Hongo, I I I can watch it like if it was on Adult Swim. Like, you know, shit's in English. And if I'm bored, I'll sit there and I'll watch it. But if I'm watching like Naruto or My Hero Academia, if I'm watching it online or on an anime website, yeah. I'm watching it in Japanese. Okay. Like, I'd rather see the English subtitles than so the you're a purist. You're a purist when it comes right. to right. But language. So, 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 so you are not a lingophile. You are a linguophile. <laughs> right. So, although, although they say a linguophile is a person that is multilingual because of their love for learning language, not necessarily well, see, I'm not, I don't, listening. I don't consider language. myself multilingual. That's yeah, why so so maybe I you said, are a lingophile. That's why I said lingophile. Yeah, so you're your I own like languages. You like and, languages. You like the purity of languages. 
There's got to be a um, for that. Yeah, so like, you know, they, I guess they figure like some people when they come to these movies, they're not going to want to sit here and have to read through the whole thing. So let's let's switch. Let's, let's give him a, a little bit and then boom, switch back to English. Because like now they're still engaged because they're like, oh, wow, they're speaking in their own, in their native language. But like, oh, hey, they're speaking English so I can understand and I don't have to read. Because even though they told us in the 80s, reading is fundamental, I don't <laughs> like to read. <laughs> they know stupid Americans don't like to read. So you're like a pedophile, but for languages. <laughs> <laughs> this is where standard and practices would be like, yeah. no, nope, TBJ nope, would be like, nope. nope, and we're ending this now. Nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Yeah, so that was one thing, I guess, I part of it is like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's kind of, I guess, what I assume is like, do they just assume Marvel fans are only going to read for so much? Like, right. they're not going to take a whole movie in another language because they just won't do it, and it's it's too much of a uh summer blockbuster. Like I feel like Marvel movies are starting to be different than a, like I think at the beginning they were thought of as die hard and like summer blockbuster, you know, type of movie like Rambo and like mm-hmm. I don't know, Rock you know, those I don't know if Rocky's one of them, but like those kind of movies, Terminator but I feel like they're becoming more artistic. I feel like right. with, I don't know, just some of the stuff we're talking about. So, but I think they that I do think if it was completely in Wakandan, and you had to read the whole time, there'd be so many complaints from people. And, and people would be like, I I had to I had to read the screen the whole time. I like I I was missing things because I had to read this, and I wanted so when they rewind it because I maybe miss what he actually said and. Well, what I like is this goes in and out of it so much. But I, so I'm somebody who I always have my subtitles on anyway. I've always had them on. Like, as far as I can remember, I've had kept the subtitles on when I was, I think it started like when I had kids when they were little. So I could turn it down and I could still watch the movie, you know, they're sleeping or whatever. And movies like more and more like the, they're so, the dialogue's super quiet. And the explosions mm-hmm. are super loud, so you turn it up to hear what they're saying, and then boom, it's exploding. Five seconds later, you're waking up the baby and all that. So, and then, I, <laughs> and then as the kids got older, I found that it was helpful to help them learn to read because everything they watched always had the dialogue at the bottom. So they right. both, both my kids learned to read real young, I think, because they always saw the words that were being said, and I think that's how you you can learn. And then I just keep it on because. I don't know. It's like I feel lost when it's not on. So I don't know if I'm not smart enough now to like listen <laughs> to stuff. But it also helps me pick up things. Like, right. Just the other day, I don't know if you saw that YouTube clip I sent you, but that I didn't know that Psy and Snoop Dogg had right. a rap song together. Uh, and I only knew that because when they went to Korea in Black Panther, the music that's playing is a rap. You know, it's an intro song. It's the intro to the hip hop beat is hip hop beat from Psy and Snoop Dogg's song Hangover or whatever. And I didn't know they had a song, a rap song called. And so I watched that whole video. I was like, I didn't yeah. know this existed. I had no idea. And I only know because of Black Panther. Black uh, Panther. And because I had the subtitles on. I wouldn't have known what that was. It would have just sounded like a hip hop beat to me. But so I guess it's just knowledge. I have like a thirst for knowledge that I didn't have when I was younger. Like, I drifted through most of my life just partying and not giving a shit and wanting to have a good time. Now I want to learn all the right. shit that I missed and you don't learn know. any and everything. Yeah. Like, and, why and, was this made? Is that a thing? Yes, yeah, Do what people I, know yeah. about this? Yeah. What is this and who's that and why is it? And everything's connected and I love it. I'm obsessed with it. Just the fact that everything's a big old web. And did you, you know what? Did I, you see? Did you watch the trailer that I sent you and Andy? On Polo. Oh, when did the you send it? For the Marvels came out today. That's What's with the, Monica. The trailer for the Marvels? Captain Marvel and Kamala Khan. Yeah. Oh, my God. That so came out is, today. I, I didn't see that. But I'm I, telling too, you. I'm telling you. Far I, beyond I, my... I watched that. Yeah. I like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Joe's going to get fucked in the head with this one. So tell me about like, this. What is What trailer came out today? Explain this to me. The, what is the, the Marvels? Marvel. Is the it a Marvel, TV show? Is it a what, movie? It's a movie. It was supposed, initially, 
it was going to be Captain Marvel 2, which I believe oh. I, we, we're about to do Captain Marvel, aren't we? This has got Tiana Paris, who is in. This is what you guys told me about when we watched. Was it WandaVision? Where WandaVision. She was, she's like, she, she, becomes, she ended up becoming Photon. Okay. Oh, yeah. And she, I love her. But I but can't then, watch this without watching but then there's also, Captain Marvel. But Captain there's Marvel's also, coming yeah, up. Captain Marvel. But then there's also Miss um, Marvel with Kamala Khan. Oh, she's I mean, in Kamala this Khan. in this Marvels too. Yeah, it's those all, three. All so yeah, so yeah, oh, so yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we we'll love that. It was just gonna be. It was just gonna be Miss Marvel too. Okay. But then I guess I want to. I want to say what happened with Wandavision and like the great the positive feedback they got from Monica Rambeau. Monica Character. Rambeau was awesome, yeah. And One division, and then everybody liked so like Marvel, okay, Girl, right? Boom, and then Miss Marvel. Ms. Marvel, so like, boom, like you know what? We now going to change the title to the Marvels. Like, I don't, you, you probably haven't even seen Miss Marvel, have you? Yeah, I watched Miss Marvel. So you saw Miss Marvel at the end. You saw, you know, her. And so Captain. here's the crazy thing: I know who Monica Rambeau is, and I know uh, Miss Marvel, uh, mm-hmm. but I don't know. Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. I don't know Captain Marvel yet because I have because I'm watching know, it all fucked up order. Which, like it's which, all screwed up. You have watched you have watched One Division, right? Yes. And you watch. I love Ms. Monica Marvel. Rambeau. So, by the I, I want to say, I, I could be wrong. Captain Marvel's soon. It's Captain Marvel next. It's it's either Captain Marvel or it's Ant Man and Wasp. I think, but it's well, I did see Captain Marvel's which, coming up. Yeah, Here, so I, see. I'm, I'm thinking she's. I think she comes soon. But three. we're in phase three still. Or is this phase four? We're phase three. Phase three. No, wait, I mean what? what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we did Thor Ragnarok, we're on Black Panther, Avengers Infinity Wars next, then Ant Man and the Wasp, then Captain Marvel, then Endgame and Spider Man Far From Home. That's a lot of stuff. Then we're never wait, gonna get wait, to Black Panther. Panther. Why did that sound wrong? Because you're drunk. Oh, the reason because you said what's 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 after this one? Avengers: Infinity War. Because I feel like, and then and then Ant Man and the Wasp came out in July of 2018, and then Captain Marvel. I feel was like March they gave us Captain Marvel before Avengers. Because it's like, how would anyone like? If she, she it was wasn't before introduced... Endgame. Oh, but it was before Endgame. It was before Endgame, but not. But it was after Infinity War. We haven't watched Infinity War yet. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Because at first, the way you said, it, I thought you were saying that Endgame came and then Miss Captain Marvel. Like, but wait, she shows up in and in, in Endgame, and people don't and ruin people it for me. Captain Marvel, don't ruin it for me. Don't like, spoil what it. What the fuck is going on here? Anywho, anywho, by the time you finish, <laughs> by the time you see Captain Marvel, you can like you can watch the Marvel then. Because you've seen WandaVision. Yes. So then I can't. Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to want to rewatch Marvel. WandaVision and. Right. But, but those are those are six episodes. Yeah. But you see, like in Miss Marvel, when she switches places with uh, Captain Marvel, it's like, oh, shit. I don't know what you're talking but, about. Like, basically, the tra- once, but- you, once you watch the trailer, <laughs> you'll see that shit. You, yeah. You'll kind of. If you remember yeah, what so, happened at the end of Miss Marvel, it was oh, like, man. Oh, okay. Then I'll get it. Yeah, okay. So. Um, I also love the fact that we end up talking on this podcast about uh-huh. stuff that's they just released this today because this is mm-hmm. upcoming. And I bet if we went back and listened to our all these episodes of Nerd School, uh-huh. you'd go back to us like geeking out about stuff that's about to come, and we're like speculating about things you guys have now l- long since watched. You know, like right. You know, we talked about we were so geeked about when. They gave us all those TV shows. I love that mm-hmm. say I love taking your saying they gave us. Because it's like you always right. word it as they're giving they you it. gifts. Like the MCU is a gift. <laughs> they 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 give the nerds. They're like, here you look, nerds, here, take this. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> they're giving us one more episode of and I remember you saying that, and I remember how excited you were in the middle of pandemic when we we're recording this thing, and you're right. like, they're gonna give us it's not only gonna be two episodes, it's gonna be six whole episodes of you know, whatever it was, WandaVision, it's not going to just be a, a one-off. It's going to be six episodes. And how excited you guys all were. Like, oh, yeah. And then we couldn't wait to watch it and talk about it. And, and, see, it and, what like, the, and this is yeah. this is way off you know, a couple of years from now. Now we're going to we're gonna probably run into this thing 
where when Armor Wars come out, because Armor Wars was originally supposed to be a series with your, you know, friend of the podcast, that one guy who you found out his name was Don Cheadle. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's about, you know, War Machine's going to be yeah. in there. Okay. Riri from uh, Wakanda Forever, she's going to be a part of it. But oh it, it went from being a television series to what they're going to call, I guess they're going to call it a blockbuster, but a movie now. Oh, it so is. They took away the series and made it just one one movie. Okay. So now it was like, okay, when we watch that, are we going to be like, man, I really wish this was a series? Like, can you just imagine watching something like Hawkeye? Yeah. You know, the guy with the bow. Yeah. If it was just a movie, <laughs> I feel like that wouldn't have been like. So, I feel like. If are you Marvel saying? Had, back up a second. You said that War Machine thing was gonna be Armor a TV Wars. show. Armor Wars. It was going to be a series. And did they start filming right, it, it going to and be then decide it's a film? Or did they just, no, before they, hadn't they started, filmed they they had, had No, started. they hadn't started filming it. Okay. It was, when Marvel went through and started shifting timelines and moving shows because of pandemic-y stuff, that's a lot of sense. Like, you know what? Armor Wars is now no longer going to be a series. It's going to be a blockbuster movie. Okay. Well, but, Don um, Cheadle, Don Cheadle just exudes that much. Although he is a master of the silver or the uh, what, the silver screen is the movie. What's the TV screen? They call that the small screen. The small is, screen. He's a master of that because he was in uh, Golden Palace. Go to Golden Palace, eh? Your favorite show of all time. But like, so I'm okay. wondering, fuck if Mary Marvel... Kill, <laughs> Dorothy, <laughs> Blanche, <laughs> Rose. Rose. F Mary or Definitely kill. Rose. Rose what? You're gonna F uh, her Rose, or marry her? I, I would marry Rose. <laughs> uh you're killing Dorothy and you're F in the hell. Because B Arthur, I just feel like if I was to marry <laughs> if I was to marry uh, B Arthur, I feel like she want me to take her last name so we could be Arthur Arthur. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Arthur Arthur, that would be awesome. But Shit. um, so I yeah, and you know you got bang, you got to bang Blanche because you know, bang Blanche, yeah, because Blanche, she you know, Blanche freaky. We know Blanche freaky. <laughs> she is freaky. She knows what she's doing. Ruba Clanahan knew her way around the bedroom. But I, what I was going to say to yeah. get back oh, on the off tangent topic that we were on, um, <laughs> I'm wondering if Ma- if Marvel in the very beginning had been like, you know, I think we're going to take some of these movie ideas. And make them in the series, like Thor. Thor could have been just as good as Loki, if the first Thor had been cut up into like a show. Wait, wait and wait, wait, wait. and the fact Thor, that it was, you mean Thor, if Thor was a series, if it was a series, yeah, it would have been just as good as Loki. I but think it don't people been think as, don't people think Ragnarok was like one of the best movies in the entire MCU? It's as one a, of the best as Thor a movie. Movies. It's one of the best Thor movies for sure. It's uh, probably here's the real best. question. Is it's a great best movie film. better than a great series? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But I feel like it could have been pulled off better because at the time Thor came, it it could they could have had more crossover with Agents of Shield, right? Yeah. So but then it also it could have well, we've established could have, Agents of Shield could have been done better as part of all this. But now it seems like they're doing it. Like Agents of Shield everyone nerd it sounds like nerds wanted everyone to do what they're doing with these and other... I'm, I'm wondering like you know so they're sitting there saying shit like secret wars won't work without certain people from agents of shield all right what I the hell is secret wars secret wars is coming out june 21st is that a tv so show jackson or Man, a movie this, this, is, this is a show there's too Come, much. Isn't there too much? That's Secret Wars, Secret Invasion. Oh, Secret Invasion. Secret well, what's Invasion. The difference Secret, Wars, Secret Wars. Secret Wars is coming. Uh, I think after the Kang stuff, or the, along with the Kang stuff, and that's a movie also. That's going to be a movie. I think there are two different two movies of that. But I think I think it's a part of the Kang Dynasty, which is what is which was what started with Ant Man and Quantum Mania. Well, Which I'm real. wondering how much <laughs> Secret Invasion is going to tie into that. But then also what I was going to say was because Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania dealt with the quantum realm, the last two seasons 
of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was dealing with the quantum realm. And, you know, time flows differently in the quantum realm. It does. So, so it could all, it could, it's sort of Excelsior. like the multiverse. Like it could. Right. So it's just so much. I mean, you have like the new Spider Verse. Together. The new like Spider Verse thing coming out where, you know, Spider Verse is a, is a Sony Pictures movie, but they made mention of um, Doctor Strange. They didn't say Peter, but they said Doctor Strange. And then the Is one his name of you Steven? from the MCU 199999. Say it again. He's not Peter. He's Steven Strange, right? No, no, no. You remember? You probably don't remember. Oh, Peter. But what Prime? happened in um, No Way Home? Is it No Way Home? Oh, I get those mixed up. <laughs> no Way Home. Far why from they home. All, why did they all be going home? home? I, I don't know which one home. we saw. I want to go home. It's a, it's well, and then they got the secret, secret, in, secret invasion, secret what, and secret city, secret wars. Did you ever watch Secret City with Commander Mark? I did. I love Secret City. That's from, I love Secret City. So, are you surprised that I know that? Because it was produced by public Mar- access television show. Maryland I'm- Public Television produced that, but right. I know what that is because they had it in Ohio. Commander Mark and Liz Zebtron and. Cindy the Dragon. I love that. Don't like, nothing like watching Commander Mark, Secret City. And then, like, right after that, you get to watch Bob Ross and the Happy Squirrel. So, <laughs> Happy I mistakes. Think, I think this, uh, Commander Mark <laughs> is going to be what brings <laughs> Gruff from the Gruff and Loud Show and Art Star together. Like, you two are going to go off into the Secret City yourself. And just, just watch episodes of Secret City. Well, and just have Commander Mark draw you into the city. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, man. That was. A- yeah, awesome Steve uh, Gruff taught me what that was. Like he taught me about Secret City. Like I didn't know what it was. He goes, you got to watch Secret City, and we watched it. Uh, uh, yes, Commander Mark, man, that ba- that dude was a badass. He had a huge schlong. <laughs> 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 Many of our listeners probably don't know what Commander Mark is in Secret City. Maybe they do. If you do, Maybe tweet you us. Do. Tweet us at History for Jerks. Instagram us at is it Nerd School Pod? Are do Nerd you run the pod. Instagram? Me and TBJ both run it. Oh, you both run it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can talk to TBJ and Art Star there. Uh, so, who is James Shaw Jr.? James Shaw Jr.? The Waffle House hero. You ever heard of this? I know. What is that about? And what does this have to do with Chadwick Boseman? According to the trivia on IMDb, Chadwick Boseman won Best Hero at the 2018 MTV Movie and TV Awards, and he invited a man named James Shaw Jr., who was dubbed the Waffle House Hero. Uh, they brought him up to the stage and gave him uh, gave him the award. He felt he deserved it more. So Chadwick Boseman gave him the award he got. Uh, what did he do in the Waffle House? Is it, is it Waffle House in Texas? Yeah, uh, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee. Tennessee. Shaw subdued a gunman at a Waffle House. The gunman killed four people, yet Shaw was able to prevent any other people from getting killed and, like, tackled the guy, I guess. And so uh, Chadwick Boseman called, invited him to the show and gave him his award. So that's cool. I kind of vaguely remember that Waffle House shooting, but now there's so many shootings every week. Yeah. They all run together. It's gross and disgusting that there's... I mean, there was the one in Nashville just a couple weeks ago that all this outrage, and there was just one in Louisville, was it yesterday or this weekend? You know, yeah, uh, just crazy. Uh, okay. In response to being asked what it felt like being one of the only few non black actors on set, and sometimes the only non black actor on set, Martin Freeman said, You think, oh, sh-. he said, You think, right, this is what black actors feel like all the time. Freeman and Andy Serkis were known as the, they called them the Tolkien white guys, not token, Tolkien, Tolkien on set since they also starred together in the Hobbit films, which I didn't even think about that. Yeah, because Andy yeah, Serkis, Gollum. he's Gollum and uh, Martin Freeman was a Hobbit, right? He was one of the Hobbits or is mm-hmm. he the main Hobbit? He's not the main Hobbit, right? Martin Freeman is, uh... I don't know any of the Hobbits names. Hold on, hold on, hold on, no. I mean, he, Martin Freeman is, uh, was he wasn't Bilbo, was he? Was he a young Bilbo? Bilbo Baggins, maybe? I know that name. Bilbo. Martin Freeman, who were you? <laughs> Come on down. Martin Freeman was in the office, 
the British office. That's what I knew him from. And I guess he was Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, he Sweet. played Arthur. Sweet. That's and he's sick. also Watson and Sherlock. Boy, this guy's in a lot of stuff. I think what bugs me is he... Well, actually, I shouldn't say it bugs me, but I, it kind of bugs me about him. I like him <laughs> a lot, but he mm. always sounds like his nose is stuffed, which mine is right now because this pollen is killing me. Uh, but I'm gonna his, his be, English be, accent or his American no, just, accent. Oh, uh, just whenever he talks, whether it's American or British dialect. So you saying he, he's very Nathan? He, he always sounds like he uh is stuffed up, like he needs to blow his nose. And I was like, blow your fucking <laughs> nose, bro. maybe you should be his his nose blower. Like, Martin Freeman, I will blow your nose for you. So I'm on Martin Freeman, Freeman's goddamn. I hate it. I'm IMDb. They changed it. I can't figure out how to get to his, what he's done. Overview, mini bio, family, trademarks, trivia, and quotes is all I can see. I don't want his trivia. I want Martin Freeman. There we go. <laughs> Actor, there we go. You gotta click <sighs> stupid ads. Fuck ads, man. How do I get ads, to what? Oh, ads, known ads, for, known way. for. Where's this goddamn fil- filmography? Okay, here it is. So we we're trying to find the Hobbit movies. Who he uh, was? James Hobbit. I could have easily just asked Google. Oh, I forgot he was in Fargo too. He was good in that too. The Hobbit. He plays Bilbo. Yes, he's Bilbo Baggins. Well, who does the the other guy play then? Uh, well, that's that's that, that's Lord of the Rings. You know, the Hobbit is before. Like he plays a young Bilbo Baggins. Bilbo Baggins is a different character in Lord well, of Bil- the Rings. Is Bilbo Baggins Baggins the main Hobbit? He's like the number one Hobbit. No, he's not the number one Hobbit. I mean, in the Hobbit, the Hobbit, yeah. But in uh, Lord of the Rings, what is it? Samwise and what's uh, Samwise Gamgee? And what's the other? Why can't I think of the kid's name now? I can't either. Noah. Uh, not Noah. It's um. God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck is your name, dude? I'm picturing him too. I know he's like he's every, like he he's was in, in everything. He was in a and lot of while, stuff for a few years. I actually yeah. thought he was English. I actually thought he was English. And then I seen him on something like, "Oh, that dude's not English." Uh. Who I just gave Google who plays hobbits? <laughs> who plays hobbits? He's a hobbit too, right? In, in Lord of the Rings or the, he's in Lord one? of the Rings. He's like the main character. He's like literally Elijah the guy Wood. The Elijah, Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood. Yeah. Yeah. I was forgetting his name. Noah. I get the names Noah and Elijah mixed up. And then I found when I'm googling that, it says Sean Aston and Elijah Wood reveal that the four original hobbits share. Tattoos. And you gotta click it. What do they share? Bobby tattoos. Tattoos. I can't. Tattoos? Once I click a bunch they, of cookies. Do they share tattoos? I feel like they would have got tattoos. They share their New York Times mini crossword scores every day. Oh. Uh, I feel like I don't I just feel like they're the type that would get tattoos. Tattoos? <laughs> tattoos? Is that how you say it in Baltimore? No, I was watching tattoos? something and they were saying instead of tattoos, like Tattoos. We're getting tattoos. Oh, here's a little thing, a little trivia knowledge. I, I think of the rhino corn every time I see that rhino that Wakabi's uh, feeding or whatever. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know what the rhino corn is, Google it. Look on Redbubble and purchase yourself a shirt with a rhino corn on it. That's a invention Artstar made. It's his art. You can check out Artstar's art. Anyway, in the, the they used a horse for the rhino shots. They used a Clydesdale. Because Clydesdales have the same gait as a rhino, so their right. hips their hips move similarly. Which I didn't know that. Did you know that? I did know that. You but did I, know but that, not, but no, I didn't. But now, right. if you just picture it, yeah. I can see it. You can kind of see it. Uh, do you know what? Which the is door- also also oh, go ahead. you know I I would say scientifically would also mean why they're so fucking fast. You know. Clydesdales are fast and rhinos. Oh, rhinos will charge you. They'll charge the hell out of you. I just I was I was waiting for that rhino to turn into the Marvel character Rhino. <laughs> right. But I don't know anything about that character. It's not the same. And character. isn't Claw <laughs> isn't Claw a Spider Man villain? 
Or am I wrong on that? <laughs> no, he's the Inspector Gadget villain. Oh, yeah, it's Claw. I didn't think we were going to talk about Inspector Gadget. <laughs> Uh, the door Melage translates to the Adored Ones, a group of female soldiers who protect Wakanda. They're the Adored Ones. Uh, uh, in the comics, each of the tribes send their most powerful female fighters to join the Dora Milaje Guard, which I don't think that's what they did in this. Uh, Black Panther was created in July 1966. Two months before the founding of the Black Panther Party. Huh, how about that? Many people mistakenly assume the name referred to the Black Panther Party, so the character was renamed the Black Leopard. However, neither the readers nor the creators cared for that title, and it didn't last long. However, the Black Leopard name gets a nod from T'Challa's battle paint at his inauguration fight. How about that? Did you know that? I didn't know that. You didn't I know didn't that? know that. I, know I did that. not. I did not know. I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. Oh, how about this? I bet you don't know this. The Royal Talon remote pilot system in the movie. Mm-hmm. You know who voices it? Um, is it the same one from Wakanda Forever? I don't know. Uh-huh. Maybe it's South African comedian Trevor Noah. Uh, yeah, Trevor Noah, and he's in. Uh... Wakanda forever as well. He's in it. Did you not? Well, he's he's the voice. Oh, he's that he's voice. The voice. Yeah. yeah, you can tell it's his voice. You can tell it's his voice. Yeah, you can. Yep. All right. Uh, Wakanda was seen as a location on a shield monitor in Iron Man Two, which I remember. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know that if you want to talk goof, <clears throat> if you yeah. want to, and I think we mentioned this, or Andy may have shit it around it or something. Yeah, I said shit it around it. Shit but, uh, around it. But I'm um, like how and what well, is a spoiler, but like how in uh Endgame they kind of make mention of shit going on in Atlantis. Oh yeah. But, yeah, but it kind of diverged from that once we got to Wakanda forever. Cause it was almost like the Wakandas knew nothing about this shit. So I feel like you know, we we mentioned vibranium a few yeah. times and shit like that. Yeah. But like going for like Marvel on the I don't want to say on the fly, but as they're building out their universe, they're moving shit around and doing other things with shit. And we're finding out like things they mentioned or kind of alluded to earlier on. It's it's like, oh, now we're here. Even though we kind of alluded to this, we're like rewriting it, making it a certain way. Like if you don't, if you're not looking for it, if you're not thinking about it, it it's it's thrown out the window. Because like I say, like once you get the Wakanda forever, and they start talking about Atlantis, it's almost like wait, in the end game, they had the little map where they were showing a the little, they showed the area of where Atlantis is, and the like stuff going on under the sea near Wakanda. And people's like, oh shit, that's how they're going to introduce Namor to the MCU. But it didn't come up; it didn't come to fruition. It and then come... once they got, yeah. once once we got to Wakanda Forever, it was almost like a whole different story than what we saw in Endgame. But then Marvel can do what they do and give us some more shit and be like, well, you know, that was probably from a different timeline. Because of something that happened <laughs> in Loki. You or know? we changed our mind or we got a different TV, writer or yeah, whatever. You know. Well, I don't know what any of that means because I'm not even to any of that. Right. But I've heard little snippets of the Namor thing and all that. But I'm trying to just put any of the stuff that's not what we're currently doing out of my brain because my caveman <laughs> so brain can only fresh. handle it. Well, I can only handle so much at a time. And remember, like, even now I'm feeling like we've gotten so far in the MCU. Mm-hmm. I want to go back to the beginning and watch it all again to <laughs> and, get and, back to where we are door, before I move door anymore. Wrestling watch through of the MCU. Yeah, like a but it takes forever. I don't have enough time in the day to watch everything. I wish. <clears throat> why can't I just be independently wealthy? So all I have to do all day right. is watch MCU just movies, sit there, just watch wrestling, things. and watch everything, and just never do anything. Uh, 
Yeah, well, I think we're we're going on uh we're going on a long time. <laughs> <laughs> this episode. Wait, that's how we quantify. It's been a while. We're yeah, well, I don't know what time, time we started because we started late, but uh but I'm looking at all these they're so Oh, see, I'm yawning. That's that good podcast. <laughs> I'm yawning. It's okay. Uh, uh, that was Joe transforming into Tired Joe. Yeah, so when Killmonger breaks the spear he's holding to make it a handheld weapon before he starts his challenge with T'Challa, it's a nod to the African war- warrior Shaka Zulu, one of the most famous military leaders in history. Shaka, Shaka. He couldn't understand why the Zulus would throw away their spears in battle, so he developed a short stabbing spear. You know that that was an. Have you ever seen the movie? The Shaka miniseries? Zulu. Yeah. No, but I always so, played so, as Shaka Zulu in uh, Civilization when I played it. But you know, basically, like one of the big parts of it's like a six part movie series. But like one of the one of the big things in that is him taking the long spear, breaking it in half. And using a shield and showing the Zulu warriors how they can get in closer and okay. have you know good close combat fighting. Yeah, if the uh, spears are shorter, but like it's a whole thing. It's like if I can find the clip, I'll you know show you. But like it's it's a uh, we'll put it on Twitter. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. I used to, like when I was a kid. I used to love watching Shaka Zulu because it was it was um it was informative, but it was also like. As a kid, you get to see nudity, right? It's like nudity. <laughs> boobies. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was weird because I was like, oh, it's on regular television. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the, uh, three three out of every five people in Wakanda go barefoot. A deliberate decision by the costuming department, which I never, I didn't notice that. Um, I did notice, though, I've been when I rewatch it and rewatch it, I, you know, you always catch more things, but the movie is so colorful as I'm re watching it now. Like, mm-hmm. I find myself pausing scenes that are of dialogue when they're in different villa, like when they're in the village. Yeah, the color palette is amazing. It's beautiful. It's like so many colors, and the costumes are so uh, developed, and, you know, all kinds of different people. And, like, when I was, I, I paused it the other day when, like, uh, I guess when he's talking to uh, Nakia, trying to talk her into being uh, the queen sort of thing, you, know, you mm-hmm. need to stay here. And they're having the conversation in the village and they're walking through everything. I paused it a bunch of times, just look at all the background people and characters. And I was like, mm-hmm. I want all these to be characters. Like, I want right. to develop. That's what I want to do in everything. <laughs> I want to develop everyone. That's why I love about Star Wars. There's a million characters, a million right. monsters. I want a series of every single monster that was in the Star Wars bar. I want a st- Star Wars series. They're doing that now, it seems like. But I want every character in Wakanda to have their own series, their own movie. Because there's all these, like, there's some blue guy, interesting guy that's, like, wearing all blue kind of outfit. And he had these, like, uh, glowing blue tattoos, like the tattoo they have under their lips. He had that same tattoo, like down his arm. Like I want to know that is that guy magic? Has he got like vibranium in his arm? Like what's his deal? You know. And then there's like a lady wearing. Well, a you know, thing. Mr. Coogler. Yeah, Ryan um, Coogler. Yeah, he was trying to. Do, you know, he wanted to uh, do a series, Ooh, um, like a Wakanda series. Yeah, and Where supposedly you... really? they're supposed to be getting a spinoff. But I don't know if they've updated anything about that since they had not like this is like last end of last year. Oh, I see. They Wakanda about Disney Wakanda. Plus series in the works with Black Panther. Uh, Kingdom of Wakanda. Ooh. This this article is from what's the date on this article? No articles? Aren't they supposed to have dates on them? So you know when this came out? It's just yeah, I found this article on Entertainment Weekly, but like they haven't, they don't have anything about it in like the upcoming timeline for the next couple of years, though. Oh, so, yeah. Unless they just, oh, we got this, we got the boom, bam, let's throw it in here in the timeline right there. Yeah, they could. I want a Wakanda series. Well, Art Star, we did, and I'm not even through half the trivia, and we did what we set out to do is we did it. We, we bullshit. Did it. Tangent <laughs> we, motherfuckers. 
We Get bullshitted it. for over an hour and never got into the movie. The Black Panther will be the movie we never get to. Uh, <laughs> the Black, by the time we get through Black Panther, it'll be Black History Month again. Well, you know, I I will say the last thing I want to talk about is that I did dig into some of the background characters. Like I wanted to know, like the River Tribe Elder who has uh-huh. the big plate in his lip. Mm-hmm. I fell down. I was like. Is that guy just a guy? Like, is he just a regular, or like an extra? He's an that actor, but he doesn't have that lip. Yeah, he's that, in, yeah. Um, his la- his, that was all makeup, I found out. Yeah, yeah he so. plays in, uh, I yeah, want to say in he's, a in a God- he's in The Godfather of Harlem, which stars Forrest Whitaker as Bumpy Johnson. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you if you ever saw that. I want to say... Isaac de Bencole. A 50 Cent show. I want to say he was in A Season of Power. One of those seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in a lot of stuff that I think yeah. you've talked about before, but but he yeah. had like a that's yeah, that's a prosthetic lip plate. Yeah, it was, a, it was a, like a makeup thing. It said it took hours to put together, put on. But he's from the Ivory Coast. He was born there. His grandparents are from Nigeria. He moved to Paris in 1975, uh, and pursued a master's degree in physics and mathematics. And then he attended an aviation school and earned a private pilot license. Before a chance encounter with a French director, Gerard Verguez led him to enroll in the Cours Simon A. Parisian drama, little, school. Little little trivia, drama School. And Godfather yeah. of Harlem, his character is from Paris. So, oh yeah, so he's got that French know. sort of backstory. A lot, a lot of times, some of these actors' backstory is and uh, is true to life. So yeah. I, I think that's pretty to me. I, like something like that, I think is cool. Like, yeah, that know, like, really is cool. That you play that, and then it's yeah. like part of you know how to you know about that. And then TBJ alluded to the the Merchant Tribe Elder, the older lady, Dorothy mm-hmm. Steele. She started her acting career at age eighty eight, uh, and she died in ninety. Or she was ninety five, so she's no longer with us now. But like she just started. She was from Detroit originally, I think. Uh, and then moved to Georgia, and then started acting when she was in her eighties. Mbaku is played by Winston Duke, who was born in Tobago, moved to Brooklyn, graduated from Brighton High School in Rochester, New York, home of the Barons. Uh, also went to that school, Kristen Wig, same school as Mbaku. Anyway, that's all we're gonna say. We went on and on about God knows oh, what, no, and no. we never got to the movie. But it's time to get out of here because it's late. And we have to sleep. Right. Do you have to work tomorrow, Art Star? Yeah, I work tomorrow. What time do you work? Uh, I think three. Oh, 3 p.m.? So you don't have to. You're not going to bed. I'm going to yeah. bed. I got to be at work <laughs> at like 10, I think. So uh, I'm all stuffed up. The pollen is unbelievable. I've been sneezing all night. But uh, are you going to sing us out, Art Star? Next episode, we will hopefully have TBJ, Professor Andy, our It'll be myself, and the we're... whole entire crew. And we're going to get into the movie. And we're so glad we had this time together. Together. <laughs> together. Thank you for listening to the Nerd School Podcast. About the president no more But evidently they don't see we in the streets still poor Still more incarceration of my kids been by the prisons And people thinking this election to end it Racism? Proud of a pessimism, glad to see Obama But don't expect me not to speak out when I still see problems Mr. Officer, now they POTUS look like me You gon' think again we're seeing brothers rolling down the street Every Martin Luther King on his American dream Still a Rodney being beaten, screaming fuck the police Me, I'm running through the pasture, trying to get away from master But the dogs is on my ass, I gotta move a little faster Can't pass for Caucasian, but I got a couple papers From the plantation saying I graduated Congratulations, cool beans, but to most school me Trying to dodge STDs, living off government cheese Trust the government, please, not even if it was me Sitting in the Oval Office as Commander-in-Chief Trying to give us us free, but there's a nigga in my ear saying You got it, Superman, you ought to keep it here Get this distinctly clear, I'm all about jetting Raps Kunta Kinte without the half-stepping A new chapter, back with new lessons After that, the final exam, any questions?
queencitypodcastnetwork.com. Queen City Podcast Network.